glory to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Father, this morning. Thank you, Father, for adding yet another day unto our lives. Thank you that, Lord, you are the one that has woken us up this morning. Father, thank you that we have got breath in our lungs and we do not take this life for granted. <clears throat> We thank you, Father, that each day that we wake up, it's a gift, O oh God. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. And this morning we say, speak to us. Speak to us, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Good morning, good morning. I pray and hope that we are all well on this day, the 24th of August. So we started off yesterday by looking at what do you do when you are surrounded by the enemy? What do you do? So this morning, I've got a question. Do you ever feel like the enemy has really surrounded you, that there is no way out for you? Like you have been closed up and you can't get out, that all you see around are enemies. The Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, which we, look, we did look at yesterday. And so if we could spiritually see, you know, the battle, how the battle really looks like, like I said yesterday, I think the way that we respond to the battles that we find ourselves in would actually change if we could really, really see with our spiritual eyes what God has laid ahead of us. So Psalms 57 verses 4 and 6. Psalms 57 verses 4 and 6. The Bible reads, this is now David. He says, I am surrounded by enemies who are like lions hungry for human flesh. Their teeth are like spears and arrows. Their tongues are like sharp swords. Show your greatness in the sky, O God, and your glory over all the earth. My enemies have spread a net to catch me. I am overcome with distress. They dug a pit in my path, but fell into it themselves. Hallelujah. I love that part. They dug a pit in my path, but fell into it themselves. Huh? We serve a God who is able to allow them to dig a pit and then Instead of you falling in, they fall into it. I just love the scripture. You know, we, 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 we looked at the children of Israel last week. You know, when the Israels found themselves trapped by the Red Sea on the side of on the side and then pharaoh's army on the other side moses what did moses tell them hmm? pastor moses he said do not be afraid do not be afraid stand still and see the salvation of the lord what he would do for you today for the egyptians you see today you shall you shall never see again the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That's what Pastor Moses told his congregation. Exodus 14 verses 13 to 14. So when you feel like you are trapped, like you are not going to get out, we are being told that we should not be afraid. We have seen that during this time, there's so many issues of of, 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 of anxiety attacks, panic attacks, there's so much fear, and this is what the enemy is doing. So we are being told that we must not be afraid. Therefore, if you ever find yourself surrounded by problems and enemies, we can get some lessons from Pastor Moses. What does he tell us? Only four things that I want us to look at quickly, and then we'll pray. We can, we can get some advice from him. Number one, he said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. We keep on repeating this. When your mind is whispering fear to you, do not be afraid. Meditate on scriptures that fight fear instead of meditating on what your enemies can do for you. An example, Isaiah 54, verse 7, what does it say? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. So you tell yourself, yes, it shall be formed, 
but it will not prosper. It will not fulfill that which it was destined for. That which it was formed for will not be fulfilled. So you tell yourself, number one, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. When the enemy is saying, you can't get out of your house, stay here. You say, I am getting out because the word of God says, do not be afraid. Father, you cover me. Number two, stand still. Stand still. Refuse to panic. Refuse to panic. Stand still. Calm yourself on the inside. Calm yourself on the inside so that you can be still and know that God is still God. Calm yourself. Tell yourself, calm down. Calm down. You are still God. Father, you are still God. You calm yourself. Psalms 46 verses 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. God is still God over your situation. God is still God over your situation. Even if the enemy is trying to convince you that he is in, in control. God is still God. The enemy does not have the upper arm. And the enemy will not have the final say. God is still God and is in control of your life and our lives during this time. Number three, hold your peace. Hold your peace. Hmm? What does it mean to hold your peace? When you feel like giving that person a piece of your mind, when you feel like, <coughs> hallelujah, Jesus, help me. When you feel like giving that person a piece of your mind, when you feel like telling that person where to get off, ha, hallelujah, hold your peace, zip it. Avoid talking. Avoid talking because in such situations, the tendency is to say something that may worsen our situation. Avoid mouth, mouth, mouth. What is it? Verbal diarrhea. Jesus, deliver us from it. Avoid that. If you must, if you must talk, if you must talk the new scriptures, since the word of God is a way, the sword of the spirit. So use scripture. So when you want to give that person a piece of your mind, then quote scripture <laughs> to yourself. Avoid talking. Ephesians 6 verse 17. For instance, I'll give an example. If the enemy is taunting you with, let's see what you would do. Let's see how she get out of this hole. Let's see how, how, how she'll be able to survive this one. Reply to them silently in your heart, silently in your heart by quoting the Bible, by quoting verses like, I will see the salvation of the Lord, what he will do for me. Exodus 14. I will see salvation of the, of the Lord. I will live to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So you are testing, you are testifying. You know that the tongue is a very issue, this weapon of the tongue. It might be small, but it's able to build and to destroy. And remember what we say in our mouth comes to pass. So you have got to be careful that your words are seasoned. Do not just talk any verbal diarrhea through and through. Hallelujah. So hold your peace. Number four, expect God's salvation. Expect God's salvation. Wait expectantly for God to do something that will save you. Accept God. Expect God's salvation. They say waiting time is not wasted time. Wait upon the Lord. Know that even if the situation seems humanly hopeless, with God all things are possible. That's what the Bible tells me in Matthew 19, 22, that all things are possible. Yes, it is looking so overwhelming. The mountain is too high and wide and I cannot manage to go over it, but expect God to come through. He's a mighty warrior. He's the God of the wars, Jehovah of the wars. That is his name. 
and God will be able to save you. He can save you and he's able to save, if, if he's able to, he was able to save the Israel, sorry, the same God yesterday and today is a God that will save you. So hold your peace. You know, when I look at what God did for the Israels, you know, he, he was able to move a cloud. Hmm? He was able to move a cloud. God moved the pillar of the cloud from in front of the Israel to behind them so that it stood between their camp and Pharaoh's camp. This cloud brought darkness to the Egyptian camp. It brought darkness to the Egyptian camp and light to the Israel camp and that ensured that the Egyptians did not move towards the Israels that whole night. God is able to do something as big as that. Hallelujah. If God was able to move a cloud, oh my God, and he was able to do what? He was able to move a sea. God sent a strong east wind, which we saw again last week, which divided the waters and moved the sea, uh, forming dry ground, which had walls of water on the right and left side. This enabled the children of Israel to cross the Red Sea safely, all of them safely. Hallelujah. You... God is able to do mighty things. Come on now. Stop looking at what you are surrounded with and keep your eyes upon the Lord. You know, in Psalms chapter 23, that's a scripture that I will end up with uh, this morning as we are about to go into prayer. Psalms chapter 23 verses 5. David says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. We are talking at, about what do you do when you are surrounded by the enemy? What do you do? And David says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Can you, can you and me keep our eyes fixed on Jesus? Can we keep our eyes fixed on God in the presence of the enemies? Because that's what David did. Because it was at this table, David said, God is not only seated there, he, God is not only seated there, he has got enemies, enemies. There is a table that is pre prepared in the presence of my enemies. That's a song that I, I played as we started, Surrounded. A table in the presence of my enemies. I am at this table and in the presence of my enemies, God is still there. So, verses 5. Hmm? In the presence of my enemies. Who are my enemies? To prepare a table for me in the presence of my insecurities. In the presence of my deficits. In the presence of my addictions. In the presence of my confusion. In the presence of what I have lost. In the presence of the threat that I will not make it. In the presence of anxiety attacks. In the presence of fear. In the presence of coronavirus. In the presence. The list goes on and on. But in the presence of my enemies, I am looking ahead. I am not looking at who is seated at the table, but I am looking ahead. And my eyes are focused on the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Lord who created me. My eyes are focused on Him. I am telling you this morning that God prepares a table he prepares a table. He sets a table for you. Because it is in the presence of my enemies. When I learn to have a heart of praise. In the presence of my enemies. When I learn to have a heart of praise. That God will set a table. When I learn to, to praise him. In the midst of what I am surrounded with. God will set a table. A table. He knows that I can live. He knows that I can be able to praise him despite what I am surrounded with. God will prepare a table for
for you and for me in the presence of our enemies because we have learned to praise him. We have learned to trust him. We have learned to understand that even though we are in the valley, our final destination is not the valley. We are headed towards heaven. Therefore, our eyes are fixed on him. That is what David said. That he said, you prepare a, a table in the presence of my enemies. And if you can walk with God, hallelujah, this is powerful. If you can walk with God in darkness enough, in darkness enough, depending on the light that he showed you in the last season, depending on the light that he showed you in the last season, you will learn to read your enemies as a sign that it is time for you to eat. If you can walk with God in darkness enough, depending on the light that he showed you in the last season, you will learn to read your enemies that it is time for you to eat. It is time for you to rejoice because God is still in control. David said, God made my enemies save me my entry. God makes the things that conspire to take us out, feed us for the place he is bringing us into, the things that they conspire against you. You and I have got a seat at the table. We can handle the trouble. We are victorious. Nothing will shake us. Nothing will move us. We can handle. We are big boys and girls. Hallelujah. So we will sit in the midst of all kind of nonsense. We will sit in the middle of whatever the enemy throws at us. But we have got our eyes fixed on Jesus. We have got our eyes fixed on the presence of the one who is within us. And greater is he that is in us than the one that is out there. So, like David said, God is setting a table for you. Do you know how to praise him in the midst of your storms? Your storms? Have you learned to trust him? Have you learned to walk with him? Because a table will be prepared for you for as long as you know how to praise God. A table you prepare for you because he knows you can sit in the presence of all these enemies. Fear, anger, jealousy, whatever it is that people are throwing, the traps that they can dig against you. You will learn to stand still. You will hold your peace. You will have your eyes fixed on Jesus. So we have learned today now four things. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Pastor Moses said, stand still. Stand still. Refuse to panic. When you are panicking, stand still. Calm yourself down. Know that God is with you. Hold your peace. Avoid talking too much. Verbal diarrhea. We refuse it. If you are going to speak, speak the word of God. Hold your peace. And number four, we have said, expect God's salvation. God will come through for you and for me. He was able to move a cloud. He was able to move a sea for the children of Israel. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And finally, we finish that with Psalms 23 verses 5, that he prepares a table before us in the presence of my enemies. And the enemies are those things that belong to the grave. The things that belong to the grave, insecurities, fear, panic attacks, deficits, fear of unknown, fear that you will not make it. All those are our enemies. But the moment that we learn to trust God, he will see us through and we shall be able to praise and to worship him in the midst of our enemies. With that said, I would like us to go into prayer today. So, we are going to continue to pray, obviously, for ourselves and others that you know. Yesterday, I think I post, yeah, yesterday, last night, I posted prayer points for us to pray for one another. We should be able to stand in the gap. We all know that there are people who are going through difficulties during this time. If a name comes to heart, I always say, pray. God is allowing you to remember that name for a reason. 
Oh, I was thinking about you. You have been, I've been thinking about you the whole day. What did you do? I always say, what did you do when you thought about me? It was not just that you should phone me, but you should pray. And you don't have to know the situation that I am in. Pray. That's why we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings. He knows exactly what it is that you need to pray. So we are going to spend time praying this morning obviously for against fear because there is so many so much reports pertaining to fear panic attacks uh -uh. we don't want that we are going to pray standing against uh the, the 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 panic attacks that it doesn't matter what we are hearing we go, we we serve a god who is in control and then we are going to pray for each other family members those that are sick those that we need to be brought to the Lord. It is time for us to trust God for the salvation of our family members. We don't want to have people dying without having accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So let us go before the Lord and pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We honor you, mighty God. We honor you, Father, for you are a good God. We honor you, mighty God, that indeed we worship a living God. We worship the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace. You are Jehovah. You are Yahweh on your own, Father. You are God by yourself. Father, this morning we praise you. We worship you. You. We open up our hearts before you this morning, Father. We say here, here we are, Father. Our lives, Father, are bare before you. We say be the one that searches us, my God. Remove anything that does not glorify you. Things that do not honor you, Father, remove from our lives, oh God. Lord, we ask you, Father, that you be the one that forgives us of our sins, oh God. The ones we have committed knowingly and unknowingly, Father. May you be the one that washes us. May you be the one that cleanses us. May you be the one, Father God, that removes anything that does not bring honor unto your name. Father, this morning we surrender our lives unto you. We say we are living sacrifices unto you, Father. We are here for you. We are ready to be used of you. Lord, we thank you even for your word this morning. Thank you that, Lord, you are t speaking to us and telling us not to be afraid. You are the one who's telling us, Father, that we should not be afraid, that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. You are the one who is speaking to us and telling us to stand still. You are the one who says that be still and know that I am God. And so, Father, we stand still. We thank you, Father, that you are the one that says to us, hold your peace. Hold your peace and I shall fight for you. Father, we hold our peace when we have felt like saying whatever we needed to say, Father. Lord, we pray that may our words be seasoned, oh God. May we speak only the word of God. God, to our situations, my God. We thank you, Father, that indeed when we hold our peace, Father, we thank you that we will see the salvation of the Lord. We'll see the salvation of the Lord. We'll stand and we'll live and to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, we thank you that, Father, you are God. You are God and with you all things are possible. You are the God that is able to bring salvation towards us, my God. You are the God who is able to move mountains. You are the God who is able to do the impossible. And so, Father, this morning we are praying, Father, for salvation. We are praying for salvation of our family members, my God. We are praying that, Lord, those that do not know you, Father, they will come and accept you, oh God. We are praying that, Father, us who have met you, us who are in you, Father, you will cause us to be in a position, oh God, to be able to, to, to minister unto them salvation, my God. To be able to, to witness the goodness of the Lord, my God, unto them. Father, may you help us to share the salvation, the good news, my God, and compromise. Father, may you give us a boldness. Where we are scared to speak, Father, remove the fear and cause us to be able to witness, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying this morning. Even not only 
for our family members. But we are praying for salvation in our communities, my God. Salvation at our workplace. Salvation at the marketplace. Father, indeed, we have seen how much lives have been taken away. We have seen, Father, people die during this time. And so, Lord, we are trusting that, Father, indeed, we'll be able to share the way to many, my God. We'll be able, Father, to share the many, the way to many that have never heard it, oh God. Those that are hungry and thirsty, those that are poor, they are poor, Father, in the sense that they do not know you. Lord, help us to share, to witness unto them. Send us, my God, to places where we can be good witnesses, where we can bring, Father, many unto your kingdom. Send us. We are vessels which are ready to be used, my God. Lord, we are praying for salvation to penetrate nations, my God. Nations where, Father, the gospel has never been allowed. Father, we are thankful because we can see in the news, my God, countries opening up, Father, for salvation to be preached, for Christians to be able to, to share openly. And Father, we can only say that it is only you that has allowed this, Father God. Lord, we are praying that, Father, you alone, who is the God, who is the God who desires that every heart comes to you. Father, you will help us to be bold. You will help us, Father, to share, to witness, my God, to many. Father, we are praying for missionaries. We are praying for pastors. We are praying for evangelists. We are praying for every person who you have called in the field. That you will equip them with the resources, the necessary resources, my God, to do your work, my Father. We thank you that, Lord, if it is kingdom work it is kingdom funded and so you have already provided the necessary resources my god father we continue to pray for countries which are in trouble father we pray that lord let your hand be upon such a nation let your hand be upon haiti my god bring order my god to that nation father god bring salvation to that nation my god as many have been left you homeless my father provide shelter to them that are in need of shelter provide father help in the mighty name of jesus we continue to trust you for salvation my god even in that nation Afghanistan my God. We raise up, Father God, a prayer for them. We raise up a prayer for them that, Lord, indeed, a solution shall be found for all those other people, Father, nationalities from other nations that are trapped there, that do not know how to get out, that you will give wisdom to nations, to governments, my God, to be able to evict their citizens. And not only that, we pray even for the citizens of that nation. We pray for Father, for women, for children, Father, that you alone who is the God who is able to save them. You will save them, my God, from what they are facing right now. We pray, Father, for those that are committing, Father, crime against humanity, that, Lord, you will trouble them until they come to you. You will trouble them, my Father, until they come to you, until they come to realize that what they are doing is not right. Father, we are praying trusting you. Father, I pray for those that you have brought within the circles of my life, circles of influence, our circles of influence. Father, we know that there are many who are trusting you for jobs. We know that there are many who are trusting you, Father, for employment. Lord, we do not look at the fact that, Father, the economy is not doing well or that companies are not employing, but we are trusting you that, Father, a job shall be found, a door of employment shall be opened for those who are trusting you. We are praying that, Father, you will come through. Lord, we do not get tired of asking you, Father, for the same thing over and over again because, Lord, we know that, Father, you are the one that hears us, oh God. We are praying that, Father, a job shall be brought to their attention. The right job, my Father. We are praying for those who are crying, Father, for business opportunities. We are praying that, Lord, indeed, you who is Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, 
You will provide resources. You will provide the necessary finances for that business to take over. You will provide that idea, Father. That idea is going to be backed up by funding, my God. We thank you, Father, that indeed during this time, you are raising up men and women of God that will be able to run businesses, my God. Businesses big time, my Father. You alone, you will enlarge their territories. You will expand their businesses, my God. We thank you that you are raising up CEOs, managers. You are raising up, Father God, your children to be in positions of authority, your children to be in positions of power. You, almighty God, are doing something new in our lives. And so, Father, we thank you for that business opportunity. We are praying for our children as well. Lord, we trust you. That even as they continue with their academic year this year, Father, indeed, last year and this year has been tough. But we thank you that our children are not the tail. They are the head. They have an excellent spirit. They do so well, Father, academically speaking. Our children are not sent away because their school fees are not paid. Father, we are trusting you for provision. We are trusting you that our children are being promoted to the next level, next Next year, Father, we thank you that their grades are well. We thank you that, Father, that our children understand what is being taught to them. Our children's eyes and ears are open. They are attentive. We thank you that our children, Father, are not rebellious, but, Father, they are respectful. We thank you that, Father, even as the teachers speak, they listen. They are attentive, my God. So, Lord, we praise you and we honor you. Today, Father, as we go about our daily activities... We remember every family, my God, every family represented on this forum, that Father, you alone, you will meet to their needs according to your riches in glory. You will meet to their needs. Those that are not well, Father, we are asking you for healing. Those that are in mourning, Father, we are asking you to comfort them. Father, we are trusting you. That, Father, this virus that we hear of, this virus that we see, Father, we shall see no more. We are trusting you for the total eradication of this coronavirus, my God. We are trusting you that you will use your spiritual broom to remove it off the nations, my God, to remove it off our country, our nations, my God. We are trusting you that you will do what you need to do even during this time. Father, we thank you that the day today... It's going to be a good day. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord. Everything today is going to be good. Today is going to be a good day. Because, Father, you are with us. You are with us. You touch us. You speak to us. You heal us. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for, for today. Please note that in the comments we have put our our telephone number. If you have got any prayer item, that, any prayer request that you would like us to pray for you, just text us. And also remember, women, that we have got a meeting on Saturday and we are not going to be live on Facebook. So if you would like to attend the meeting first of us, please text your contact details to that number that is, is in the comment field. Thank you so much, family. You are so encouraging, you know, to wake up in the morning and to sit and to listen. So thank you. I appreciate everyone that joined in. Thank you, my bishop. Thank you, Sister Sylvia. Thank you, Sister Denga. Thank you, Auntie Joyce from Botswana. Thank you, Nandipa. Thank you, Brother Shadrach. Thank you to everyone. Sis Sister Lundi, every person. If I have not mentioned your name, I apologize. Thank you, Lady from Botswana as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for always sitting uh, through the devotions with me. I don't take it for granted. I take every word of encouragement that you send to us. You know, I receive it. And so thank you. Thank you. May God bless you. We will see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Shalom. Shalom.